Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So, welcome back to the fifth, right? Pretty fast, right? The fifth episode of Ask Rainer, right? And in today's episode, I've got a question from a subscriber who asked me, right? Hey, Rainer, how do you actually, you know, handle conflicting time frames? I'm sure this is something that we all can relate, right? Uh, you want to, you know, go long on a trade, let's say on the daily time frame, right? You want to go long. And then if you go up to the higher time frame, like the weekly or monthly, you realize that the market is in a downtrend. What do you do? So I'll cover all this and more in today's episode. See you there. Okay, so in today's episode of Ask Rainer, right, uh, is a question from a subscriber who asked me, right, how do you handle conflicting time frames? So I'm going to share with you uh, a few practical solution that you can adopt right there's really a, a no one size fit all right it really depends on you know what is your goals of trading what is your trading style and then you can choose a appropriate solution for your trading right the first thing first is number one have not more than two time frames the reason why i say this is because if you were to you know look through enough time frames there will be bound to be time frames time frames which are at conflict with one another right for example Let's say you're looking at this chart. This is the chart of the dollar against the African rand. This is the five minutes chart. And you can see that this is, you know, pretty much in an uptrend. But if you go down to the daily time frame, it's in a downtrend, right? Or if you go down to the, go higher to the weekly time frame, it pretty much, you know, is, uh, this is even worse. This could be either a downtrend, an uptrend, or a range. It depends, you know, on where you start looking your chart from. So you can see that if you look through, you know, enough time frame, like this is the one hour, looks like an uptrend to me. The four hour looks like a downtrend, right? You can see that, you know, if you look at too many time frames, right, you are going to get analysis paralysis. Some is going to say an uptrend, some is going to be in a downtrend, some is going to be in a range, and some you don't even know what it's, it's, you know, it's doing, right? So this is why I say to keep your time frames to not more than two time frames. Now, moving on, the next thing that you want to do is to define the trend, right? I think when people talk about trend, right, you always would think about, you know, higher highs, higher lows but that is you know pretty subjective right let me explain why if you look at this chart again right the dollar against the african rand i'm sure this is pretty straightforward you can agree that this is pretty much in a downtrend because you see a series of you know lower highs over here right but what happens when you go up to a time frame like this this is the weekly time frame is this in an uptrend or a downtrend and now you realize that you no know, it's pretty hard to define if you were to use you know higher lows or higher heights. For example, over here, right, it's pretty clear it's an uptrend. But what happens when this market forms a new low over here and it start making start making lower low and lower high? So is this a downtrend now or is this still in a longer term uptrend? So what is the trend right now? So can you see right that defining the trend in using this approach can be subjective because if you were to look the trend just from this portion to this portion of this uh, time period, then yes, the trend is down. But if you were to look from all the way from the left side to the right side, then this could be still in a longer term uptrend. So this is why you want to define the trend objectively using a simple measure, a simple filter to tell you that, you know, whether you should be long or short. And again, right, a simple filter that I use, something that you should be familiar with by now is just the 200 period moving average. If the market is above the 200 period moving average, I look too long. If the market is below, like this daily time frame, the market is below the 200 period moving average, I look too short. So this is how I define the trend objectively, right? I don't look at, you know, higher highs, higher lows, even though it can be useful. But as you've seen earlier on this weekly time frame, it can be subjective because this approach really depends on, you know, how far back in time you want to look at the chart. Okay, so I just use the 200 period moving average to define the trend. Moving on, right? The third thing, you can do is that you know, what if you define the trend and you realize that let's say you know on the daily time frame the market is above the 200 period moving average but on the weekly time frame the price is you know below the 200 period moving average so at this point in time right even though you have defined the trend even though you have used two time frames the the uh, the trend are still in conflict so let me explain once more let's say the on a daily time frame the price is above the 200 ma on the weekly time frame, the price is below the 200 MA. So clearly at this point in time, right, you still have a conflict. So what do you do? Right? What you can do is, again, right, wait for it to align. Wait for both time frames to align themselves. Uh, there is, you know, the, I would say 
an issue that you have to consider about this approach is that you could miss a big move, right? If you're waiting for all the stars to align. And sometimes if you were to wait for all the stars to align or the, for the two different time frames to align, you may not get many trading setups, right? So this, one way to overcome is to, you know, trade a large number of markets. If you're trading like, you know, 50, 60 markets, then yeah, you can wait for, you know, both time frames to align themselves, okay? A second solution is to be more conservative with your target profit, right? So let me explain. So for example, right, on this weekly time frame, right, of the dollar African rent, the longer term trend is still up because price is above the 200 period moving average. But on the daily time frame, you notice that, you know, price is already below it, right? Let's say, for example, you went short on this, uh, this perhaps the break of this low over here, right? Price got rejected higher and you went short on the break of this low, right? And you saw earlier that on the weekly time frame, the trend is actually up. So what you can do is to be more conservative with your profit target because you know that on the higher time frame, the longer term trend is still up. So perhaps, right, instead of, you know, riding for a full move, a full trend, you could look to take a profit or rather to take a more conservative, you know, profit target like perhaps, you know, at this area of support over here. So if price comes into this area of support, you look to get off the trade, right? This is a possible uh, way to handle the conflicting time frame. And lastly, what you can do is to, you know, is to just focus on your entry time frame, right? This is, I would say, more applicable to trend followers, right? Because for trend followers, systematic trend followers, they don't really look at, you know, you know multiple time frames. They just focus on their entry time frame, right? They have a specific trading setup and they just take it, irregardless of, you know, what the higher time frame is doing. So I could explain this. So let's say again, right, on this same chart, the dollar African rent. You took the same setup, right? Say, for example, you took this sell setup, right? Maybe price did a forward break of this highs. You went short, right? And you just trade according to this time frame that you're seeing over here, right? You don't even look at this weekly time frame over here. True, right? The weekly could be in an uptrend. But as a trend follower, you choose to give more weightage to this uh, particular time frame that you're trading on. So whatever uh, trading entries and signals you get is all based on your entry time frame. And I would say this is very relevant for systematic trend followers where they just, you know, take their entry signal, right? If it's long, they go long. If it's short, they go short. And they don't look at, you know, what the higher time frame is doing, right? So this is more a more systematic way of trading, right? Of course, there are, you know, there can be pros and cons to both sides of it. For example, the, the cons is that, you know, you may be trading against the higher time frame, right? But the pros of it is that you could be, you know, entering the trade where there could be a huge profit potential because, you know, what could possibly happen is that perhaps this could be a start of a new downtrend, right? Where the market, right, breaks this uh, area of support and then continue lower. So for those who just, you know, focus on their time frame, they could usually get in earlier at the start of the move. That is still not apparent on the higher time frame. Okay? So with that, right, let's do a quick recap, right? So... Firstly, right, to overcome the issue of, you know, conflicting time frames, right, I suggest to have not more than two time frames, right? Perhaps you can use the daily and weekly or the one hour and four hour, uh, maybe even the four hour and daily. It's, it's really up to you to choose your two time frames, right? Uh, the key thing is that you don't want both time frames to be too near or too far apart. Like, for example, the five minutes time frame and the monthly time frame doesn't really make sense if you ask me, right? So you want to space your two time frames, you know, enough. Okay, uh, second thing, right, uh, I teach you how to actually define the trend. I use just simply the 200 period moving average. If the market is above it, I look too long. If the market is below it, I look too short, right? You don't have to use the 200. You can use maybe, you know, uh, 150, 170. It really isn't going to make much of a difference, right? But for me, I just stick to the 200 period moving average. And the third thing you can do is to actually, you know, wait for both time frames to align themselves, right, before you take on the trade. However, I shared that, you know, if you were to do that, you may not get many trading setups, right? So one way to work around it is to trade more markets. Uh, fourth thing you can do is to be more conservative with your target profit. Since, you know, you know, perhaps you are trading against the higher time frame trend, right? you can actually be more conservative with your target profit. I would say this is more suitable for swing, swing traders, right? For those, you know, just looking to take one swing in the market. And lastly, right, what you can do is just ignore everything else and just focus on your entry time frame, right? This is more suitable or rather very, uh, uh, yeah, suitable, right, for systematic trend following where they just focus on their time frame, right? All their entries and exits are all based on their entry time frame, right? So I hope these five tips, right, would help you, you know, handle, I would say, you know, help you better trade when there is conflicting time frames out there.
Okay, so with that, right, I've come to the end of this episode of Ask Rainer, right? I hope, you know, you found it useful because if you do, right, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the like button below. And if you have any questions for me that you want me to answer, leave it in the comment section below. With that, I wish you good luck and good trading. Talk to you soon.